Colin. Richard. Ring, ring. Pretend I'm calling you on the phone. Uh, hello, who is – well, no, wait. I, I would look and say Richard Bazzi. Um, I, I don't want anything to do with my extended auto warranty. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah. no. So let me ask you a question, Colin. Yes. What does Alex Highsmith, Ben Roethlisberger, Joe Hayden, Devin Bush, T.J. Watt, and Deontay Johnson all have in common? Well, three of them are groins, but all of them have in common that they're on the injured list, and or at least we're gimpy through some part of this week. So that would be troublesome, right? Oh, I, so before I, I mean, I I want to talk about last week also, but yeah, I mean, going into this coming week to Cincinnati. Man, that's a scary injury list, isn't it? Especially, you know, an injury list with volume is one thing, if you have a bunch of guys on it. But then to have important guys on it is really troublesome. I mean, doubly troublesome. And every single one of those guys, you could make a claim in some regard is irreplaceable. Like, those are guys that you name that you simply can't lose. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, and I did some some medical research you know, my friend, Dr. Google yes. and Dr. Google says, you know, four to eight weeks could be on a groin. Oh. Um, now, of course, we're in the NFL and we don't have four to eight weeks. But then I haven't heard anybody ask this question. And it's probably I just didn't see it. Somebody probably did. And it was probably you. Um, TJ Watt, groin injury. Any possibility that you know, staying out impacted that? Yeah, I don't think so. I think it's a good question. It's something we've kicked around a little bit, but I don't think so considering he went through all the cardio protocols and stretching and did everything. And I just, I don't think that there's any correlation with not being there because he didn't necessarily come into the season cold. He just didn't have contact. You know, he did all the conditioning. He did everything else. And you get landed on by a 300 pound guy, like it's bound to happen. It, it's bound to happen. I, I, I'd probably disagree with it because um, that's what I do basically is disagree. But um, I'd probably disagree with that because even though there's, there's conditioning, it isn't the same as contact. It's just not the same. And, and I don't know, you know, I'm not saying he's not conditioned. Of course he is. But I think the bigger lesson is when we are negotiating contracts, even, you know, not not to keep these guys out because they have more of a propensity to get injured the longer they're out. And that's just an observation, certainly not a fact. Right. But, uh, one right? can say, though, the importance of his contract. And here's there's this is a great and this is exactly what I do for a living is look at both sides and then have an argument and then people call about it. Um, <laughs> but one can say, well, you pay him all that money and he got hurt. Right. And my gosh. Right. And is he worth it? Then the flip side of it, Richard, is this. As soon as he left the game last week, you could tell the Steelers' defense wasn't the same. That could be the argument for paying him, right? Oh, I think we should have paid him 100%. I think he's. A, if there's anybody in the world worth it, he is. Um, he is such an impact player. He changes the whole game. He really does. Um, but, you know, I, I watched Mike Tomlin's press conference. I always watch him, and I try to really look into his eyes and try to really understand what he's really saying because he's kind of cryptic. He's a smart guy, and he says things sometimes that I think give you a little insight. One thing in particular that I noticed was when they asked him about Najee, mm -hmm. and he said he thinks Najee is growing and that he's learning the importance of how Wednesday practice translates to Sunday game. I kind of took that a little bit as maybe – he isn't taking Wednesday practice just as seriously as he should. I took it as he got by at Alabama on individual talents, and he was that good. And now everybody's that good. So if he wants to continue mm. to be better than other people, he's mm. going to have to practice more, practice harder, practice better than other people. I took it – I think where we agree is he – issued a challenge to one singular player yeah, to get better through the week of practice. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and we do agree because really, regardless of what your, your perspective in mine is, um, 
they both have to do with preparation. Right. And, you know, we live, and my kids will tell you, and my daughter is actually in the room with me, but it, I would tell you that my kids grew up and they hated me every day um, with reciting the five Ps. I'd say, Ariana, what's the five Ps? Richie, what's the five Ps? And the five Ps are proper preparation, of course, prevents poor performance. And, um, and that was kind of what I think Mike Tomlin alluded to. I think he even said that preparation equal performance, something like that. And I, and I think it was pretty interesting, but I'm a Najee guy, no matter what, hundred percent. I am too. I th the, the, the ills of this offense right now are the offensive line. There's no question. The one thing I'd like to see Najee Harris do though, some, and the only sort of um, the only sort of concern that I've had or, or thing that's bothered me just a little bit is if it's not there, just get what you can. Like we saw Le'Veon Bell and that's a high bar to set, but Le'Veon Bell, if there was, he turned a no gain into two yards all the time. He turned two yards into four. Najee Harris seems to be trying to turn everything into 20 yards when sometimes you just have to take what's there, fall forward and take the one yard and be done with it. And I'd like to see him grow into that. I think that's a really great observation also. I, I hadn't thought about that, but I, I do agree with it um, because he does have big play capabilities on almost every play. And I think that you're right. He needs to take what's there, what they give him. And I think that's a maturation process. And, um, and, and you know, the NFL plays at a different speed than anything he's ever done. And, uh, you know, I hear some of the pundits talk about, you know, Najee, they're game two, they're criticizing him. It's ridiculous. Well, can I ask you a question that I think is thematic over everything that's gone on in the past two weeks? Um, yes, sir. Do you look at this team, and this is for me the big hammer question, right? Do you look at this team as everybody had thought they were going to be one and one and here they are at one and one, or is the concern more how they got to one and one? And it's not necessarily for some people, the arrow pointing up because they beat the team. They shouldn't have beat some think, and they lost to the team that they should have beaten. So is it at the end of the day, the sum total, Hey, they're one and one, like that's what you wanted or they're one and one and it doesn't look good. Well, I think, I think it's almost like an injured player. It's always got to be next man up. And, and, if, and if we look at a loss as the injured player, um, it's next game. So, you know, that's yesterday's yesterday. It's in the rearview mirror, and we can really only look at tomorrow. However, you have to be able to have it tomorrow. You have to have a, a, a deep understanding of what went wrong. And, um, and I think we went wrong. I mean, you know, Minka, come on. I mean, man, right. it just, just smoked. Um, in every possible way. Um, so everybody contributes, like Mike Tomlin said, everybody contributes to the win, everybody contributes to the loss. But to be able to know and look in the mirror, I think the Steelers have a, a great ability to do that. I think several people did that, as a matter of fact, which comes back to our quarterback. Mm -hmm. You know, Big Ben says, you know, it's on me, I need to play better. Um, every Minka said, we, I need to play better. Everybody said, I need to play better. So the realization of that, but then you come back to Ben, you know, uh, what did he, how many times was he hit? 10 times? 10 times. Yeah. 10 times and two sacks. Um, you know, that's, that's a lot for a 29 year old body, let alone a 39 year old body. Um, but without, well, ben, if he can't play, now we have a whole different. Issue. Oh, if he can't play, that's a whole different issue. But if he can play and he's hobbled, nobody celebrates, enjoys, and wraps themselves in the conquering hero role like Ben Roethlisberger. No one has ever done it that I've seen in our town and in sports. He's what do you the mean? kind of what do you mean by that. I mean, he's the kind of guy that'll throw a touchdown pass. Somebody will dive and make a great play and catch it, and Ben will come off the he'll come off the field, and he'll make sure you see that trickle of blood. Oh yeah, 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 coming yeah. off. Uh, <laughs> so. By telling the world that, oh, you know what, this peck, it's tough. And this happened way back, um, you know, on, on Wednesday. Oh, my peck, it hurts and whatever. If he can, it's just how he's wired. I'm not saying he's not tough. I'm not saying he's not a champion or anything like that. He loves being the conquering hero. 
My yes, if you does. remember a couple years ago, my sternoclavicular thing was coming through my shoulder pads. I could have <laughs> poked my heart out. What do you say? But I threw a touchdown. <laughs> well, I you know I have heard that from some uh, coaches that have worked with them. Um, and Ben, if you ever do listen to this um, or see it by chance, you do owe me my closest to the pin prize. Um, which you walked away from a long time ago. You owe it to me. You took it. You said you were going to give it to me, and I never got it. But um, <laughs> we played golf, and I I don't golf, and I have I happen to hit a closest to the pin shot that uh, actually I can't even believe I beat him in that at that because he's really good. But anyway, um, yeah, he does do that. But you know, maybe I have a tendency to do that too. I understand that, you know, and I'm not even sure it's on purpose. No, um, it's not on purpose. It's how he's wired, and he rises to the occasion seemingly more whenever he builds obstacles obstacles in front of him, it feels like. Well, the one thing he said also that I saw was that he he was disappointed because this is probably the hardest he's ever prepared in his career. And did you see that comment? Yes, yes. Um, I don't know how to take that. I don't know if that's I, good. I don't know if it's bad. I don't know. I, I don't know. I just, you know, this, the, the bad part to me is to see, I, I can't get that image of the last game they played last year. I can't get that image out of my head with him in his head, head down and, and Marquise Pouncey with his head down on the bench. I can't get rid of that image. And I, I don't want that to be the last things we think about Ben Roethlisberger because he's well, way too damn good to, to have that image. Don't you find that, interesting and in that maybe he can't get that image out of his head and maybe he's chasing the same thing you're looking at as a fan Richard he's chasing that as the athlete it's like okay you grew up and maybe your guys you guys played pickup basketball down at the courts right or mm -hmm. you just went and shot by you never can leave on a miss you got no, you've you got to you okay. got to make the last bucket right absolutely and, Colin. And he Good would point. see he would see that as leaving on a miss and he's going to chase that make until they, he just can't be out there anymore. That's a really good point. So go forward, and what do you think? Steelers or Bengals? And they're like the Cleveland Browns were before, before last year. I don't believe in the Bengals until the Bengals show me I'm supposed to believe in the Bengals. So they could play the Steelers with five starters. They could play against Woodland Hills or Penn Trafford or North Allegheny, and I'm going to pick – Woodland Hills or Penn Trafford or North Allegheny against the Bengals, just because until the Bengals prove they're not the Bengals, I can't pick them. The Steelers will beat them, I think. So I hope, and this was that's from my heart. I, I, I do hope that. I am so concerned about our secondary. I just don't have a comfortable feeling in Joe Burrow. I mean, I, I just think we have the, the ability to get torched in that secondary. Oh, my. That, Are you are you going to pick against the Steelers? I'm not, but I said uh -huh. with my hope, my hope is that it goes Steelers. But my fear, which is the worst thing, my fear is that Burrow just torches us in the secondary. Um, you know, no Devin Bush, that concerns me. Um, our corners, you know, concern me. Um, it just concerns me. I just, I, I see what uh, Derek Carr came in here and did. Right. And, you know, like it or not, um, Got to tell you, you know, Chucky had a pretty good game plan, didn't he? Had a great one. He outcoached Mike Tomlin, I thought. Hey, but oh, don't look, say that. Bite your tongue. I, I, he did. But no, he did. <laughs> Joe Burrow can't do it. If the Steelers think their line is bad, Cincinnati's is probably worse. Burrow's been sacked nine times already. He has no time in front of him. Mixon has no room. Uh, I just think even if it's just Cam Hayward by himself, he's going to cause too much trouble. Well, and it, because he can, he really right. can. But really, do, who is his supporting character? Because then really it becomes strategy, and then they just isolate on Cam. And you know who's who's next man up on the line? I don't know that actually. So yeah, it'll, who is it'll be worm. It'll be wormly. It'll be bugs. It'll be. Um, It'll be they'll rotate a, a cast of characters in one, and you know that's just like Mike, Carlos just Davis. Like Mike, yeah, and just like Mike Tomlin said, this is an opportunity for young players to shine, which is why I'm okay with our offensive line. I actually like our center a lot. I really feast, do. Feast or famine, and I think that he'll get rid of the famine as he gets a little bit 
older. Um, it's, it's boom or bust seemingly on every play where he'll make a great play or he'll let somebody in. I think yeah. he'll tighten a lot of that up, though. Yeah, I think so, too. And I, I'm not I'm not as discouraged by our offensive line as most people are. I just think – imagine what they learned just from last week to this week. Right. I mean, and just in everyone, one week. Everyone knew it was going to be a work in progress and a bunch of young guys that are trying to figure out how to play together. Yeah. Um, the one stat I did see that bothered me, I didn't understand why, and I don't even know if it's true, was that our offensive line uh, cost is $12 million. We have $12 million invested in our O-line, and that's the lowest in the NFL. I, yeah. Is that true? Do you know if that's true? Yeah. It, well, I don't know if that's true, but it probably is considering the draft guys and how none of them really got paid yet. And Trey Turner is the free agent. He didn't make a lot of money. But the defensive line and the front seven of the defense costs a lot of money. When you have Hayward, when you have Tuit, when you have Watt, um, those guys are going to cost a lot of money. So the flip side of it is you're paying a lot of money to stop people. Right. And, and honestly, that's going to be the game right there. The right. front seven on defense. That's the game. It's not the offense. It's not. It's not Joe Burrow. It's the defense. It's the way that seven those seven people play, and that's going to determine it more than anything. You bring the pressure. Hey, Keith Keith Butler, he's fabulous. I think. I think he's a great strategist. He learned for so long under the genius of defense, Dick LeBeau. And so uh, we're both picking the Steelers. I'm going. I gotta okay, go. Good. Yes. Okay. I'm picking. I gotta the Steelers. go. Steelers. Um, twenty to. Uh, 2018, just barely. Well, you know, it's funny. I was thinking like 2017, but I don't, I don't want to be a copycat. Um, so I'm going to say Steelers are going to break out and the offense is going to put more points on the board. I'm going to say 27-21. 27-21. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm going to so say no, no offense, it's time. And, and I do think that Ben will play the whole game. And if he doesn't, I think Mason's capable. And I, and I really like Dwayne Haskins a lot. Yeah, um, uh, we'll see. I think there may be – last thing for you. I think there may be a little trickeration. I think we may see a little wildcat from Najee or from Juju. I think there may be a way to work around Ben being hurt and not necessarily play a backup quarterback and limit Ben snaps a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised if they put something in. Now, see, you should be an offensive coach because I hadn't thought about that. It's a pretty good idea. Yeah. I like the wildcat idea. It's perfect for his skill set. One would think. Absolutely One perfect. One would think. All right. Well, let's wait and see. I can't wait. Colin, thanks for taking the time to just banter with me. This is what it is. Thank you, Richard. Thanks, Colin. Yep. <laughs>